In the news this week, COVID election. Miller says health policies could make or break parties at the polls. The bus launch. The Liberal Party officially launches its state election campaign with a plan for the future. It's a no-brainer. Premier McGowan positive on population vaccination. And on Western Perspective, Zach Kirkup's feature interview as we wrap up the year that was 2020. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Sarah Smith. Good evening. Well, the state election is drawing near and in a year of pandemic health policies could make it or break it for either parties. WA's top doctor Andrew Miller says COVID is not over and both major parties need to be clear about their health policies. Here's Kit Sanders' exclusive report on what the focus might be. With the state election now less than 100 days away, it's crunch time for the parties to start putting their policies together. And the words on everybody's lips this year are pandemic response and health policy. President of the AMAWA, Andrew Miller, says both parties need clear pandemic plans. We need to see both parties step forward with clear policies around how they're going to improve what we've got now and how they're going to continue uh, the pandemic response. Freshly appointed opposition leader Zach Kirkup has been Shadow Health Minister for a number of years and Andrew says this may be promising for many WA families. It'll be really interesting. We've got an opposition leader now who's fresh and new and obviously full of uh, ideas, I would imagine. Um, and he uh, is coming from the Shadow Health Portfolio, uh, up against the veteran health minister who was himself a Shadow Health Minister for many years and knows the system inside out. Dr Miller says that ambulance services, urgent care and aged care will be the issues on many voters' minds. In the months to come, we will see which health policies sink and which swim as we approach some of the busiest months in the political calendar. If the West Australian public uh, want to see good results for their family's health, uh, now's the time to be asking the parties what they're going to deliver. Kit Sanders, WAMN News. The state government has announced it will use its $1.8 billion surplus to build a new women's and babies hospital to replace the 104-year-old King Edward Memorial Hospital if elected. It comes following a stronger-than-expected budget surplus of $2.2 billion despite the COVID-19 pandemic. It's expected that a new complex will be located at Queen Elizabeth's Second Medical Centre, with works beginning in 2023, creating more than 1,400 local jobs. The state opposition is challenging the McGowan government to bring it on, officially launching its election campaign with an economic plan for the future. They're pushing jobs and lower household costs, sceptical about what they call Labor's lack of vision for the state. Nelson Liu reports. Riding the bus towards WA's future, the Liberal Party promising to stand up for Western Australians. This is a fantastic opportunity for the future of our state. The campaign bus is the party's new attraction while spreading its message for the March election, rolling it out with a long-term goal for the state. It will be the sole focus of the Liberal Party in Western Australia. A new plan for WA's growth is on the cards, the party announcing the first of its economic policies. While touring businesses on Thursday, it's promised to create 200,000 new jobs over the next five years to strengthen and diversify the economy, making small and local businesses a priority. It'll also cut taxes and the cost of living for households looking after families across WA. And it is a vision that we are committed to through lower taxes, lower fees, household fees and charges, as well as building infrastructure and prioritising local jobs. But the one guarantee will be this, it'll be cheaper to live in Western Australia under a Liberal-led government than under the Labor government. With around 100 days to go until the election, they've questioned the government's goal for the state. They slammed its inability to fulfil its jobs guarantee. It is extraordinary that the McGowan Labor government have abandoned their plans for a jobs target and have abandoned their plans for sharing prosperity indefinitely. They've also rejected beliefs they're unprepared and understaffed following Shadow Treasurer Dean Alder's decision to quit at the next election. Political experts say new leader Zach Kirkup's youth and a push for a new approach is its difference. Being young is not a problem. Being inexperienced is not a problem. I mean, that's why I think they want to sell as a virtue. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm not a standard sort of spinning type, you know, line politician. I'm, I'm giving you a different approach. And the party is focused on delivering certainty if elected. It's a huge challenge for any, anyone uh, 100 days out for an election, but I'm excited about it. Nelson Liu, WAMN News. 
Premier Mark McGowan has speculated that overseas travellers and school children may be required to vaccinate themselves against COVID-19 in the future. The comments come after the UK became the first country to authorise a COVID vaccine. The Premier strongly encouraged everyone to be vaccinated. AMAWA President Dr Andrew Miller expects that, for the most part, mandatory vaccinations will be unnecessary. Australia is predicted to implement the vaccine from 2021. We all want people to get vaccinated and there's ways you can encourage people to do it. As I said, if you want to go overseas, uh, you'll be required to be vaccinated, I think is a no-brainer. Um, but there's other measures we can have. We had uh, compulsory vaccination for school kids, you might recall, uh, to attend, uh, to attend uh, school. So those sorts of things are the so sorts of things that you can look at putting in place. No, the AMA is not in favour of uh, holding people down, giving a mandatory vaccination. We think uh, the vast majority of the population will be really keen uh, to get hold of this vaccine so that they can get back to something like a normal life. Meanwhile, the government's Safe WA contact tracing application reached a significant milestone this weekend with more than 624,000 downloads. The McGowan government says the app's data is encrypted and will only be used by health officials for contact tracing purposes in case of an outbreak. An extra 18,000 local businesses in WA have also registered to use the app on Sunday. WorkSafe investigators have begun reassembling the roof of a building at Curtin University to determine the cause of its collapse. The roof is being reconstructed at the site in Welshpool as part of the investigation. It follows the tragic passing of a 23-year-old apprentice who fell to his death when the roof collapsed. Two other construction workers were also injured. The Minister for Industrial Relations, Bill Johnson, visited the investigation team to witness how new technologies will be used to find the cause of the fatal accident. Summer has finally arrived in WA with the temperatures heating up in Perth. The mercury is set to reach 38 degrees on Tuesday after steadily rising into the 30s. It follows a cooler start to the summer with a record low of 6.6 .6 degrees on Tuesday night. But the Bureau of Meteorology says the dramatic changes to the weather are normal. We're looking at a fairly typical pattern whereby the winds will be shifting out of the northeast and we start to see this very hot air coming down from the uh, Kimberley, down through the Pilbara and the Gascoigne in towards Perth. And when it does that, when it comes from the northeast, we do see these very warm temperatures building up. It will also be very warm on the Wednesday as well. We're looking at a, a day of 37 degrees, but then it will cool down as the trough moves inland during the course of Wednesday. Work began this week on a revitalisation of Ramford Road Bridge as part of the government's Metronet plans and efforts to reduce traffic. 156 18 metres deep holes will be dug to accommodate the pylons required for the eight-lane bridge. The project will include six lanes for cars, two dedicated bus lanes and shared cyclists and pedestrian paths. The works are also vital to the construction of the Thornley to Coburn link, which will be the first circular rail connection in Western Australia, creating 500 jobs across the project. The Thornley to Coburn link is one of nine Metronet projects underway this year and is set to be completed in 2022. At least five people have died following flash floods caused by monsoonal rains in seven provinces of southern Thailand. All deaths are believed to have occurred in the Nakhon Si Tamarat province. The floods began a week ago but have begun to recede. It's estimated that 255,000 households have been affected or displaced. NASA astronauts aboard the International Space Station have successfully harvested a crop of space-grown radishes this week. American astronaut Kate Rubens grew the plants over 27 days, investigating how outer space conditions affect plant growth. The harvest is a step towards NASA's Artemis program, which plans to put explorers on the moon by 2030. Subiaco locals welcomed the festive season in style this weekend with the inaugural Celebrate Subi Long Table Dinner. The dinner was hosted by local gourmet outlets Bukla Cafe and Urban Soul Food with hand-picked premium wine pairings chosen by Celebration Subiaco. Fremantle's may be longer but ours is a much higher quality I suspect. So, uh, but look, uh, it's, it's all uh, a question of uh, taking in the atmosphere and uh, the ambience of the day. We've got a large range of uh, festive events leading up until uh, Christmas. 
and uh, there's something for everyone and we'd like everyone to come down and just enjoy what we have to offer. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website and social media pages. No matter where you're watching, Sarah and myself wish you good health and good night. Take care.